how many districts were there in Yerevan? Three. Long live my children. Gentron Yerkatahpur and Kond. Here it is, Yerkatahpur district and Kond. The history of medieval Yerevan is covered in detail based on the lithic and biographic sources that have reached us. Lithographic mentions of Yerevan have been preserved since the 9th century, particularly the first lithographic mention, which is considered to be the earliest accurate lithographic evidence about the history of Yerevan, dates back to 874. And that mention was preserved in Sevanavang, in particular in the northern facet of lithography of the Church of St. Carpet in Sevanavang, which reports interesting information about donating gardens to the monastery from Yerevan. The inscription was made on behalf of the famous Princess Mariam of Sunik. The lithograph was made during the reign of Ashot Bagratuni, and there are evidence of the church's construction, and that construction is marked by the donation of gardens. And among those gardens, one garden is attested by Yerevan. This is a very important mention from the viewpoint of marking Yerevan as a garden settlement in the 9th century. Whenever foreign travelers visited Yerevan, they always emphasized the abundance of parks in the city, particularly French travelers talk a lot about it. There are interesting references to the same gardens in later centuries as well, in particular from the 10th, 13th and 14th centuries. That is, in the high Middle Ages, Yerevan also presented as a center of horticulture and viticulture. There are many such references, more than two dozen. For instance, let me mention the Ketcheres Monastery, Hagartin Monastery, among the famous monasteries. Even in the Tigran Honet Church of Ani, there is a mention of Yerevan. These are all Mentions from the 13th century, where mentions of the one, two, five gardens from Yerevan are attested. From the viewpoint of studying the medieval history of Yerevan, lithographs and manuscript inscriptions are of extreme importance and cornerstone significance. These two written sources enable researchers to outline the medieval general profile of Yerevan, what Yerevan was like, what it had, and what kind of life it lived. From the manuscript records, we can collect information on Yerevan's scientific and cultural life. If not directly, then indirectly, the scribes themselves testify to it, with the manuscripts they imitated. Besides, the manuscripts with ecclesiastical content, works with secular content were also copied. That is, works done for study, research or learning purposes. The oldest manuscript known to us, which was copied in the current territory of Yerevan, is the Tonavajar manuscript, copied by Sargis the scribe in 1297. The handwritten manuscript is kept in Mashtots Madenataran. The manuscript was copied under the auspices of the once standing St. Stepanos Church of Nork. Today, the location of this church is unknown, but imagine how many other sanctuaries or landmarks there were, of which we have no mention. Such churches apparently also existed in the Middle Ages, about which we do not have sufficient information. We know three manuscripts from Sarkis the scribe, which proves that in Nork and at least thanks to Stepanos the scribe, scribing flourished and handwritten manuscripts were copied. Of course, the time has been ruthless to other manuscripts, but three have been preserved and prove that in the person of Sarkis we are dealing with an efficient scribe.
We can clearly say that up to the end of the 14th to 15th centuries, Yerevan was a fairly developed and active, lively city. The Asfazatin Cathedral standing today in Yerevan is one of the famous complexes of the 13th century, which can be said to be an illiquid witness of Yerevan Middle Ages, around which St. Anna Church complex is located today. In his lithographs, he gives clear information about Yerevan being a settlement rich in water and land still in the 13th century. This speaks of the already high Middle Ages that Yerevan has spiritual centers. A spiritual leader, Yerevan has a large population since the same inscriptions mentioned Kuchpaks. And Kuchpaks are stores, shopping centers, and the trading was naturally carried out in a crowded transit and lively environment. The same Ani, Tallinn, Garni, Yeregis, among them also Yerevan, Davin and Vagarshapat, which can be combined with each other as a centers embodying the urban culture, each having a particular habit in its place. The oldest manuscript imitated in the territory of Yerevan has been known to us since the beginning of the 15th century. It is the manuscript imitated between 1409-1410 in the desert of St. Anania Apostle of Yerevan, better known today as St. Zoravar Astvatatin Church. Here, in the 15th century, manuscripts were copied, books were multiplied and some of them fortunately reached us. For instance, three persons are mentioned as scribes of the manuscript I mentioned. The most famous was Tovma Metopetsi, the renowned rabbi of Metopavank, teacher and scribe, who was ordained in 1409, just one year before completing the manuscript and after staying in Yerevan for some time, he returns to Metopavank, where he develops his prolific activity. <laughs> In the Middle Ages, Yerevan was the Persian Khanate center for quite some time and as a Khanate center, it was attached importance and was always appreciated. It is not a coincidence that as a result of the Persian-Turkish wars, it fell into the hands of Persians and Turks 14 times. However, the main part of the population as a rule were always Christian Armenians. The Armenian population has always been the majority, but these demographic changes, in particular the invasions of Shah Abbas at the beginning of the 17th century and after that, the Russian-Persian and Russian-Turkish Persian-Turkish wars had a great impact on Yerevan and naturally, the ethnographic composition of the population had undergone frequent changes. At the end of the 16th century, and especially the beginning of the 17th century, the Shah Abbasian deportation was a genuinely disastrous period for the Armenian people, which strongly affected the region, not only demographically, but also dramatically affected the spiritual and cultural life, including on manuscript creation. If we look at our manuscript heritage in the general outline, that period, the late 16th century, and especially the first decades of the 17th century, presents a relatively modest picture. We have time windows. For example, no manuscript is known to have been copied in Yerevan since the 14th century, but that period closes very quickly. And we already have manuscripts from the beginning of the 15th century. The creation of manuscripts continues fully into the early 20th century. For about 700 years we have had almost continuous copying and multiplication of manuscripts, which is an excellent indicator of Yerevan's history, scientific and cultural life. As scribes often note, we have manuscripts copied in orange community near Yerevan or in the rural town. St. Nishan Church of Gedarkel or Zagavank, Arinjavank or St. Asvatatin of Orange, and the church known as St. Simeon Tseruni in Nork act as scriptoria. In the Yerevan city center, amongst the centers of literacy are the desert of Anania Apostle, St. Asvatatin Cathedral in Yerevan, St. Paul and Peter Church, St. Sargis Desert of Zoragur, St. Geborg of Noragavit, and dozens of scribes working in these centers, who copied flourished manuscripts that still fascinate the researchers of the field. Until the first half of the 20th century, Yerevan mainly had three large districts. Those were the Old City, or the Mer City, or Shahar, the other one Kond, and the third one Yergatahbir. 
The first planning of Yerevan was made by French travelers Tavernier and Chardin, the first in 1650, the second in 1673, and they described the borders of Yerevan. Tavernier's description is very interesting. Yerevan had markets, squares and etc. And he mentions the strict of Christians Armenians. When we look at the map, we notice that the plan is exactly the district, referring to Kond. <laughs> In the Middle Ages, Yerevan was a city with quite large population. The churches of our city can prove it. Historians of 15th and 17th century constantly talk about six churches. That means if the city had six active churches, then it had a fairly dense population. Churches in Yerevan or next to Yerevan were also educational centers. Hundreds of people and figures received their education in these academic centers or under rare spices. They later became prominent representatives of Armenian culture, and the manuscripts they copied or sponsored are of great significance and importance. From the memoirs of Yerevan's manuscripts, we primarily get an idea of such household details, such as, for instance, the scarcity of drinking water in Yerevan. Here, in the memoir of one of the manuscripts, we learn that a man named Grigor Hoja of Yerevan, nicknamed Mozakens, who was a trustee or vicar of the St. Svatsatsin Cathedral, as mentioned in the memoir, took care of the whole process of bringing water from 40 springs to the St. Svatsatsin Cathedral. In the absence of statehood, after years of trading, Hoja Mozakens returned to Yerevan and lived here, doing a large number of charities. He was a Mycenaeus of a number of manuscripts that were copied by his order. He built the famous bridge of Ashtarak, which still exists today and amazes us with its beauty. He built the clock tower of Yerevan's St. Astvatsatsin Cathedral and a small bridge over the Parakar Canal. This information can only be picked from manuscript memoirs. Unfortunately, we should state that Yerevan has lost its face and its historical background twice. The first was because of the natural disaster, which was the great earthquake of Garni in 1679. Why Garni? Because the epicenter was Garni, however, Yerevan was heavily damaged, which was already a prominent city center, rich in churches, residential houses, and it can be said that it was completely destroyed. Several churches and some buildings have been preserved, one of which is just the same St. Afvatazin Cathedral, the small church, which to our joy remained standing. And the second, already in 1930s, during the Stalin regime, many churches and mosques were destroyed in Yerevan. In their places, cultural centers and apartments were built. That is the period of planning and reconstruction of the city was culturally a massacre. It is known that in the place of the Moscow cinema, there was a well-known church by the name of Paul and Peter Apostles, which was the episcopal center of Yerevan in the Middle Ages. That is, it was the vicarial center, such as today, for example, St. Sarkis Church is a vicarial church. In the Middle Ages, the mother church of Yerevan was the St. Asfatsatsin Cathedral, and the vicarial church was the Paul and Peter. The same Gethsemane Chapel, which has been a small burial church and was again destroyed in 1930s, and its place, the building of the National Academic Theater of Opera and Ballet, was built and many other churches as well. In 1679, the monastery of St. Anania Apostle was destroyed, on the site of which, in the 1690s, Zoravor St. Asfadzatin Church was built. That is to say, this is how Yerevan's church construction in general, urban construction, has undergone constant changes. And in this context, naturally, we cannot ignore the fate of Muslim monuments. The same Zalhan Mosque, which was built in 1687, in the place of the Sultan Mosque, which was destroyed by the 16th 79 earthquake. The mosque of Zalhan was demolished in 1940s and its place, the Artists Union building, was built. And in general, regarding the mosques of Yerevan, it's impossible not to mention the case of the Blue Mosque in Yerevan, since it is the only mosque operating not only in Yerevan, but also in the Republic of Armenia, which can also be said to have its appropriate place among the medieval monuments of Yerevan, as an important factor representing the Iranian culture. 
The mosque was built in 1765 to 1766 and is named after Hussein Ali Khan as it was built during his time. There are quite a large number of quotations from the Quran and generally from the point of view of its stylistic, technical, color palette, the mosque can be presented as a quite special reflection of Iranian culture in Armenia. Konda had medieval monuments, some of which are destroyed, but some are still standing. The active St. John the Baptist Church is the evidence of this. The church built in the 7th century was destroyed by an earthquake in 1679, and the new church was built by Melik Aramal in 1710. In the upper part of the eastern wall, we see a hajkar with a sign of crucifixion, under which there is an inscription left by Malik Aramal related to construction of the church. What was the result of the reconstruction of many churches during the post-earthquake period? Who were the leaders? Here, on the one hand, there was our elite, in the person of Catholicos of all Armenians, Nahabed Yedisati. On the other hand, there were the Shah's privileges and the proclamations, the copies and originals of which reached us, where it is clearly stated that in the Armenian reality of the state we should also allow churches construction and never more prevent Armenians from building their faith centers. Zorovar Church, St. Paul and Peter were being built based on the composition of our early medieval church churches, that is, the three-nave basilica type was widespread, churches with a longitudinal composition, which had one or two piers of gables connecting by arcs and oriented east-west. This is very interesting and is documented not only in Yerevan, but also in Nahijevan and in Sunik. In other words, the late medieval church building, which experienced an awakening after the earthquake, traditionally adopted the early medieval church model. Kont district is one of the witnesses of the medieval history of the city of Yerevan. It was in the western part of old Yerevan, at the height of the Hrazdan river. Due to the relief, shape, structure, according to Acharyan, Kond means a long hill. That is, it was on a hill. Shahatunians used to say to my neighborhood that the foreigners called Tepebasha. And it is no coincidence that now foreigners often say that it is a Turkish or Azerbaijani city, but in reality it is just a translation of the word Kond. All travelers mentioned that Shahar and Kont were settled mainly by Armenian Christians. The population was mostly Armenians. The fortress during the Khanate period was mostly populated by Persians. During the period of Russian rule, the fortress as such no longer existed. Kond had mainly Armenian population. It is also evidenced by the Kozern Cemetery, which is one of the medieval monuments. Unfortunately, it is destroyed, but there are enough testimonies and the book published by Karo Gafadarian containing the numbered inscriptions. And we see that there are more than 150 inscriptions, which can prove that the majority of the population in Kond were Christian Armenians. <laughs> Such complete houses have been preserved in Kond. This is the house number 17, one of the oldest preserved residential houses in Yerevan. It was built in the end of the 17th century. This arrangement of bricks, vertically and horizontally, besides giving a beautiful appearance to the wall, also provides earthquake resistance. The walls were 1 to 1.5 thick, and in those houses it was warm in winter, since they provided heat resistance and cool in summer. In the 18th century, Yerevan was lit by oil lamps and these irons that remained on the walls of this house and in various other parts were just parts of those oil lamps. Early in the 20th century, little by little, electricity invaded Yerevan and such power plants began to be built. 
this is one of the first ones. Kondi Chartarapetutsuna, Kochme Vernacular Chartarapetutsun. Kondi architecture is called a vernacular architecture. It is translated as folk architecture when in a section on a wall we see various cultural layers with customs of different periods. In this section we see a vivid version of that vernacular architecture. The new generations built a new apartment on the second floor with modern windows and beautiful railings. <laughs> This is one of the Kond crossings which very few people know about, and so we go to Paranyan Street. Kond is a kind of labyrinth with different crossings from different streets to the central part of the district. Kond is also one of the favorite districts of artists. You will see this grapevine in the works of many artists. And even in the months of May, June, also, often on this street and on the other streets of Kond, you will see students, graduates, artists, just sitting on the street and painting. Kond lives a real life. Kond is a lively district with its own life, its own flavor, its own traditions, its own customs, its own rules. <laughs>